The next big healthy living startups. Welcome back to another Text to Nation interview. I'm Fred Fishkin. Applications are now open for the fall 2021 T-Mobile Accelerator Wellness Tech Program. What's that all about? Joining us is Brian Fries, VP of Technology Ecosystem Development at T-Mobile. Thanks for taking the time, Brian. Absolutely. Couldn't be happier to be here. Well, tell us what this accelerator program is all about. Sure. Um, great question. Um, accelerators take a lot of different forms. And uh, in the world of accelerators, I think this corporate accelerator is um, one of the, the longest running corporate accelerators out there in these days. It's, it's changed over time. It, it was formed in, at Legacy Sprint uh, prior to the merger about eight years or so ago. And you know, all of the accelerators share in common the idea of you know, partnering with the entrepreneurial community, right? Working with young companies, the um, the outcomes and how they get to those outcomes can can be different. And with the with the merger uh, having been completed between Sprint and T-Mobile, um, T-Mobile, you know, sitting on this treasure trove of resources to uh, build the greatest five. G network in the world, and then it drive innovation on top of that network. Looked at this program and said, "Hey, we can we can take this um, program, work with these young companies, and foster relationships that are really about commercial hypotheses on how you know what these innovators are doing might intersect with you know T-Mobile's uh, innovation uh, objectives." Um, to build, you know, great new things on top of this this 5G network. So that's that's how we use it. Um, we use it to engage with young companies uh, in in focused areas uh, that you know currently we're running a cohort that's focused on a, immersive technology. The uh, cohort that's coming up that was just announced that we're going to talk about today is about wellness technology, and these are categories that as we look at, you know, the, the advancement of 5G and where we think things are going to go, these are categories that we think will be really important to the uh, advent of new products and services uh, beyond handsets that, you know, bring 5G to life. So we're using this as an opportunity to engage with entrepreneurs, see what folks are building, uh, and, you know, see how we can work together with them in ways that intersect with, you know, wireless services. So that's it in a nutshell. So what kinds of, of things are we talking about? Uh, fitness wearables, telehealth? What, what are you looking for? It's a, it's a great question. So uh, we, we talk a lot about health in, generally inside the company and, you know, 5G and healthcare are terms that get thrown out in the same context frequently. Um, we're, you know, to be a bit more specific about what we're after here, um, it's the, the way I would think about this um, is that we are focused on consumer lifestyle uh, initiatives, right? So more so than institutional healthcare initiatives. So when we think about what we're trying to accomplish with this cycle, what we would like to do is target, you know, products and services that, you know, serve our customers who appreciate how technology can aid them in promoting and preserving their, their personal well-being. So that's that's what we're that's what we're after. Um, it's you know so we're purposely not being too prescriptive. You know I don't want to narrow it down too far, but it is this is for consumer lifestyle products and services, and then within that you know category there are you know a, a, a very broad range of things that we could see come to life, right? So um, when I think about you know. When, take this personal wellness category this way. Like today, we see a lot of technology that lets people you know, review behavior. It's a, sort of motivating. You know, we can see how many steps you take or, you know, how fast you ran or, or things like that. And that's, that, and that's terrific. You know, it's created, it raised awareness in the profile of kind of wellness measurement um, as something that we should be doing as, as human beings. Um, what... Where I see this going is that 5G um, and you know, complementary technologies to 5G can take this idea and bring it to an entirely you know, higher level of value by one, you know, let's say measuring things that are more difficult to measure and observe 
say than kind of location or speed or distance, right? Those things you can get off the GPS. But you know, with 5G, we're we're thinking about um, devices, new types of devices that can measure, you know, things about your wellness. So it's inside the body or outside the body movements, uh, activities that we're not currently measuring today. So measuring new things, you know, different types of hardware that can tap into, you know, what's going on with us uh, personally and, and capture data uh, over longer periods of time, because um, it's one thing to know, you know, how many steps you took today. Um, it's another thing to, you know, have a, you know, robust, robust catalog of kind of your personal wellness um, statistics, your own profile of who you are and how you behave and what your, your body is like, and then watch how that evolves over time. So as you think about, you know, capturing new things and then understanding those things, you know, both in real time, because that's, you know, one fantastic thing about 5G is that, you know, the, the responsiveness of the, of the network lets us see things going on in real time and, you know, no, no delays like in, some things, you know, the delays don't matter. It, you don't need to know how many footsteps you, you took today faster than you currently do. But when you think about things like, you know, let's say you're doing stress management and want to see how your brainwave activity is acting, you want that to be as real time as possible so that you, if you're trying to use biofeedback to manipulate, you know, your body processes, you know, that um, real time, you know, uh, data and response is super, super important. Otherwise, you, you know, an experience wouldn't be good. So, but we also want to be able to track things you know, over long periods of time, right? So, you know, as, um, as, as someone who, you know, I've got a few decades under my belt now. So, you know, as someone- Not who, as many as me, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. I may feel like it some days anyway. Um, but in any event, you know, just understanding, you know, your personal profile, how that changes, because some, you know, some things that about ourselves change over long periods and, and they might happen so slowly that the trends develop below our, our awareness, right? Just because it happens so slow. But if, if you're, you know, a creature who's armed with the technology to know your profile and then, you know, have intelligence capturing and understanding that data over time, you know, you can alert yourself or you can be alerted to changes that, you know, are heading in a, in a direction, you know, that, that would suggest you should be taking some different action. Now we can all read articles about, you know, eat healthy and, you know, exercise more, but it's, it, you know, you, you, you um, succeed at what you measure. And, and so I think, you know, as we, look into the future of personal wellness and think about this idea of, you know, taking greater ownership and stewardship over our, you know, personal wellness profile. These data sets that tell us about how we're um, changing as human beings, physically, mentally even, um, are, are really important. And to, to, to do all that, you need, you know, new, new technology that can one just you know capture that data, you know understand you know the relationships between the things you're measuring, and understand you know what that should look like over time, and when there are exceptions to you know what's what's observed versus what would would should be happening, right? So we can know like something's going on here. I should you know I can be more proactive at managing my personal well-being because I have greater insight into how that well-being is is evolving. Uh, and we're I certainly said. seeing a lot of companies, big and small, jumping into this space during the pandemic. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's um, there are big and small companies uh, all trying to get at this. The, the power, you know, of you know, when you take 5G as an ingredient in some of these solutions and just look at the power that we have, you know, um, and then maybe some of it exists today, but some of it's still evolving. And that, that's why we're running this program to see, you know, I'm not a, a medical person, so I couldn't even tell you all of the brilliant things and ideas and concepts that are out there, you know, that folks in this field uh, that have the courage to innovate and bring new things to life, what they're doing. And that's, that's where we're putting this call to action out. Like 
talk to us about what you're doing and let's have a conversation, you know, about what, what a, an incredibly powerful wireless network is able to do because, you know, the networks of the past have been able to manage, you know, everybody having a handset. But when you start thinking about, you know, personal wellness devices, you know, multitude of things that you might be in passively or actively engaged with, in your health management, your, the number of devices that we have to consider uh, as network operators grows exponentially, right? That could never be handled or managed previously. 5G is able to, to take on that exponential increase in device counts, as well as the data um, that those devices, you know, start to contribute to the network load, right? So very important. Tell us about the, the process here now. You, you're taking applications through June 25th. Uh, what, That's right. what is the process like? And then you narrow it down to what, a handful of companies that you're going to be in, involved with here? Yeah, that's right. So we'll, um, you know, take all these uh, applications in and, and, you know, we do, in addition to the application process, we do proactive you know, scouting. So we've got folks on our team that are out there, you know, looking for folks that may not be aware that we put this call to action out. So we're going to do this recruiting, uh, inbound and, and outbound recruiting um, through uh, June 25th. And then we're going to take that pool and we're going to start, you know, we'll have um, stewards inside the company of, you know, this program who are working collectively to kind of screen through, you know, what are the ideas? Are there, are there themes within this category that are emerging? Are there companies that have, you know, something that's, you know, incredibly innovative or incredibly relevant to, you know, what we're trying to accomplish um, strategically in T-Mobile? Just try to look for the best ideas and the best fit. Um, and then we'll have, you know, a smaller group that we'll sit down and actually, you know, have uh, interviews with. Um, and then from that, we'll narrow the pool down. And our, our typical, you know, cohort size is in anywhere from, you know, six to 12 companies, you know, depending. So that's, that's probably where we'll, where we'll end up. And what can, do, is there financial backing or how does the collaboration then work? Yeah, great question. So a lot of accelerators do have um, kind of financial incentives. That's not part of our program. However, um, you know, ours is really about, it's an in road to working with a national wireless carrier, um, which is hard to do, honestly, for, you know, for a small company to try to, to figure out how to work with a company that's as large as T-Mobile, that can be difficult. So this is an inlet. Um, to do that. And that's, that's the incentive, right? Is getting the right level of attention and structure because, you know, each company that we bring into our program will have a, uh, a business guide as well as a technology guide. So we look at this, you know, relationship from the, from the standpoint of what's our, what's our hypothesis. So when we bring a company in, what's the hypothesis of how we would see ourselves working together, right? It's a commercial hypothesis, if you will. And over the course of a few months, the duration you know, of the front end of the program, we work on the business side and the technology side to vet that hypothesis. So here's what we thought going in, what we could do together, and let's you know, test the business logic. Let's test the technology and how you know, our 5G network integrates with this product or service, make sure everything, you know, lines up. Um, and then at the, at the kind of end of the phase one of the program, I would say in that, you know, 60, 90 days, we'll say, okay, um, we, we succeeded in affirming that hypothesis or, you know, something that we didn't foresee that came in and changed our thinking about it. And so we'll decide, you know, how to work with these companies or not on an ongoing basis kind of thereafter. So that's roughly how the, how it works. We do have, so while we don't, you know, have direct financial in incentives for being selected into the program, you know, because these are really commercial hypotheses that we're testing, the, the companies where that looks promising um, get introductions to our uh, T-Mobile Ventures fund. So this is a, a fund that, that T-Mobile um, operates that invests in, in young companies with technology that's attractive. So there's, there's that opportunity um, through the program if you know, things look really promising, they could 
potentially receive an investment from T-Mobile Ventures. And terrific. And, and the end benefit is to the consumers after all, too, if these companies Absolutely. succeed and bring valuable new uh, services or products to market. Absolutely. And that's where we're headed. I mean, we want, you know, if, if we could articulate the vision just, you know, a, a little bit, and I touched on it earlier, you know, we, healthcare is expensive and it's not terribly convenient in, in a lot of instances, right? Um, and, you know, what we would aim to do is, you know, we won't solve it through this, through this, uh, this single program, but in the spirit of enabling and empowering you know, consumers to be better stewards of their own wellness, right? We can, we can take technology and make ourselves more proactive in how we manage our, our well-being. And so if you think about what the ultimate outcome is there, you know, you have healthier people and that means f fewer trips to healthcare institutions, right? If we can put the power in their hands to, to you know, know and manage their well-being. They don't have to visit the, the health care, whether it's a regular doctor's visit or it's an emergency visit, they don't have to do it as often. And when they do do it, hopefully it's a much more proactive conversation versus an you know, acute, reactive, severe engagement because something went terribly wrong. And maybe you know, through this technology that, that, that we're helping to foster, and we'll find ourselves as, as consumers in a position where those instances of kind of acute, severe issues uh, are reduced. You know, that's where it, it'll be better for our own pocketbooks, you know, longevity, it'll be uh, better for our institutions that are, you know, trying to handle all of the demand and you know, hopefully create much better wellness experiences for customers over time. For more information, people can go to mobileaccelerator.com. Brian Fries, thank you so much for taking the time with us. It's a pleasure speaking with you, Fred. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us and sharing the, the message about what we're trying to accomplish.